Hello, Math Study students, and welcome to your online lesson. Today, we'll be talking about percent error. And in order to do that, we will learn to calculate percent error and define relevant terms. We'll know we're successful when we can use the percent error formula to successfully solve and make relevance of IB level problems. Or to say that another way, use the formula to understand IB level problems. Start with some vocabulary or terms of notation. Approximation is a word that we've probably heard in the real world. It's a value given to a number which is close to but not equal to its true value. I can think of a good example being pi. Pi is a number when written as a decimal that goes on and on and on and on. So we will often approximate that to say it's 3.14, but that's not its exact value. That's an approximation. And I could approximate it to just a single significant figure if I said, well, it's about three. Three's not as good of an approximation as 3.14. It's not even as good as 3.141, which would be the next decimal in the string. But it's, uh, it's still somewhat accurate, and it's a much better approximation than saying pi is two or something like that, because it is relatively close to three, at least to one significant figure. Uh, another way we hear approximation used is if I'm approximating the number of students in a class, I might say it's approximately 30, even if it's a little bit higher, 31, 32, or a little lower, 28, 29, or something like that. An estimation is a little bit what I was just talking about, where I don't use um, uh, an exact formula or something like that. I'm using a judgment or prediction in, instead of carrying out a more accurate measurement. That's estimating. So I could look at something compared to something else and say, oh, it's a little bit more, and make an estimate based off that, or using rounded values. But again, there's other ways to get a more accurate measurement outside of estimation. So getting to our learning intention, we want to talk about error, or specifically percentage error. But before we can talk about percentage error, error, we want to find out what is an actual error. So we often use the word error to mean mistake. Um, and that's sort of what's going on here. When we measure a quantity, whether it's with a ruler or some other way, we're only getting to a certain degree of accuracy, um, like a scale, for example. It might be round to the nearest pound, or um, if I measure something with a ruler, I might be able to get it to the nearest millimeter, but I might not be able to get more accurate than that. And there's always a difference between our measurement and the actual value. And this also occurs if we're estimating. If I do an estimate, I'm going to have a value that's probably not exactly the right answer, or the correct answer, or the true answer, but it's close. The difference between the exact answer and the approximate answer, or the rounded answer, Answer is um, is called error. We have a formula for finding error, and so what we do is we take the exact value, which I've represented here as v sub e, and when I say sub, I'm saying s u b, like submarine, and that's what we have here. We have a subscript, and so in a math class we read that as v sub e, which is to say our exact value, and then our approximate value is v sub a. So to find the error, we use this formula here, which says take the approximate value and subtract the exact value. And two slides from now, we'll look at an example of that. Now that we know how to find error, we are going to look at another formula, which helps us to find, again, that learning intention, which was percentage error. So percentage error means it's obviously going to be written as a percentage which means the maximum it can generally be is 100%. That's a whole thing. And so error is often expressed as a percentage of the original or the exact value. Now, to find that, we have a formula. And this formula is actually right in your formula packet that we got on, the, on one of the first days of class. If you look here in the numerator, you'll notice I have v sub a minus v sub e, which is actually our error formula from the last slide. They don't give us the error formula by itself in our formula packet, but if we know enough about the error formula, we can see that it's embedded in this larger formula right here. So we've got the error in the numerator, and then in the denominator, we are dividing by the exact value, v sub e. So we subtract, we find the error in the numerator, and then we divide that all by the exact value, and that gives us a percentage of the exact value. Now, these vertical lines that we have here and here, those are absolute value signs. And what that means is regardless of whether we have a positive or negative, we're going to just make it a positive answer. So we drop any negatives that we have. So we should have only positive answers here. And then the IB formula packet likes to do this a lot, where when they want to make something a percent, they say multiply by 100%, which really just means move the decimal two places over. So if you already move the decimal over, you don't need to also multiply by 100. Either or would get the job done. 
All right, again, this formula is in your formula packet, which means you can use it on any of our tests or exams, and you can also use it on the actual IB exam as well. All right, so we're going to um, look at an example here, and uh, in this case, we are estimating the length of a path to be 50 meters. I want to point out the way I've spelled meters here versus the last slide. This is sort of a European or international spelling, so it's not a misprint. Um, it doesn't even come up as a misprint in Google Docs or as a typo. Um, so you can see it written both ways, M-E-T-E-R-S, as well as this sort of European spelling. And our textbook will often use the M-E-T-R-E-S, as will the IB exams. So we estimate a path to be 50 meters. Its true length is 52.3 meters calculate the error. So let's go back to our formula that we had two slides ago, which said if we take the approximate value and we subtract the exact value, that will give us our error. So now I'm going to replace my approximate value, which we came up with as 50 meters right here. And then we said its true length is 52.3, and so that would be the exact value. So we subtract 52.3, and even without a calculator, we can see that they're 2.3 apart. However, we're subtracting the bigger number, so it would be negative 2.3. As we look at that, it tells us a couple things. How far was our estimate off by? Well, it was off by 2.3 meters. Again, our guess was a little bit off. And it also tells us, because there's no absolute value sign on the error, it tells us that we were negative 2.3 meters in our guess, which meant we were 2.3 meters too low. We weren't over, we were under, and the negative sign tells us that. Had our guess, our original guess here been higher, like 55 or something, we would have ended up with a value that was a positive error, which meant that our error or our guess was a little bit too high. So a lot of information that we can get from that really simple formula. Now we're going to go to percent error. Reminder of the formula that we have here, it's absolute value. We're taking the error, V sub A, minus V sub E, subtracting those again, and we're dividing by the original or exact value. Once we're done with all that, we can multiply by 100%, or another way to say that is just move the decimal point over. So we already did this work here in the numerator, the V sub A minus V sub E. We know what that answer is. It's negative 2.3. That, again, is our numerator. I'm not going to redo the work that I'd already done in part A. And then we're going to divide that by the exact value. So that was our 52.3 meters. And I want this all to become positive. And even without a calculator, I can, um, I can obviously make this positive by just you know, putting a positive sign there. And so now I am going to reach for my technology. And when I divide 52, I'm sorry, 2.3 divided by 52.3, I end up with the value 0 0.043977. So that was point zero four three nine seven seven now i wrote several significant figures down in this particular class whenever we get an answer that needs to be rounded we can always round to three significant figures in fact that's what's expected of us you'll notice i put these ellipses or this dot 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 at the end to show the number was going on longer and i put more than the three significant figures i would need down just so i'd have that recorded and so I'm going to rewrite this now with just three significant figures. So I have point zero, 0.4 is my first significant, 3 would be my second significant, and the third is 9. And you'll notice behind the 9 or to the right of the 9 was a 7, which means I need to round that 9 up, which is going to make it a 10, carry the 1, and I actually end up with point zero, 0.4, 4, 4 zero as my uh, three significant figures. And then I also need to multiply that by... 100% to make it into a percentage. Or another way to say that is simply move this decimal point over two places. So our final answer for part B, I'm going to bring it all the way up here, is 4.40%. Now, the reason I included the zero on is because I wanted to round to three significant figures. And so I need to show that I did, in fact, have that extra zero here in both of those cases percent of error. So I was about 4.4% off with my guess.
All right, and that is how we calculate percentage error. We're using that same formula no matter what the context is. Um, if it talks about finding the percent error, again, we subtract our uh, approximate value minus the original, divide it by the original value, make sure it's positive, and then move the decimal or multiply by 100 in order to make it a percentage. And we're only going to do that one example here. If you want to look at other problems, uh, section 2H from our orange book will cover this section. And uh, hopefully now we have an idea of how we can calculate percent error. And we looked at some problems so we, we could actually find that percent error and then solve those IB problems uh, correctly. Till next time.